Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is basically the benchmarks and all of my findings around the 1300X system that I actually built last month. So let's begin. Okay, so first of all, this we're going to be talking about how I found the system as idle. You know, clock speeds just literally as though it just came out of the shop. So, first of all, I would like to say a massive thank you to box.co.uk for making this video possible. So, thank you very much, guys, for that. And uh, basically, first of all, as I said, this system is not overclocked. So, the system itself is at 3.5. The system stayed a consistent cool between 28 and 31 degrees centigrade which is absolutely fantastic you know it is a very very good result for some reason the memory itself it was a 24 megahertz kit sorry 24,000 megahertz kit that i used it was the a data dazzle for some reason this kept on clocking at 2133 i don't know why but obviously things may have changed if I decided to overclock it, which a lot of you know I actually did. So we'll cover that later on in the video. But apart from that, the system itself at stock was very, very stable. And, you know, it performed quite well. As we look at user benchmark, the gaming side of it was scored at 55%. The desktop at 60% the workstation at 42 so looking at all of it here you can actually see what is inside the computer down the right hand side and i was expecting the boot drive to be in the red because we are using a western digital blue which tends to be a little bit slower than the black and the green however it still performs pretty well and i wanted to try and keep this the budget overall quite low but still give you the best possible performance out of the gpu and with it with it looking actually quite nice as well you know what i mean try to keep the overall system affordable so moving on to page two we can see that the ryzen 3 1300x scored an excellent straight out the box at 81.2 percent as a lot of you personally know that i have um a i5 7600k and that is pretty fast by itself but certainly the 1300x gives it a really good run for its money and you know the overall experience i would say i was quite happy with it and very very surprised because a couple of like going back like 10 years ago the last time i actually owned or played with a amd cpu it was massively behind. AMD have came leaps and bounds since the last time I actually tried one. And I was very, very happy with the results. Okay, the graphics score was a 56.2 score in average. That is quite reasonable. You know, I'm not going to complain about that at all. The hard drive itself scored a massive 96.8. And I am absolutely ecstatic about that. And then moving on to the last but not least, the A Data 2400 um, memory kit, which itself scored very, very good. You know, 78.5% is actually pretty damn good. So not only does it look absolutely beautiful in the system, it performed very, very well as well. So, what else do I need to do? Of course, I need to try it out on Time Spy. The system itself scored 3,482, which is a very, very respectable score. 3,630 of that was on the graphics, and the GPU scored 2,831, which, to be honest, for a, a system like this, it really can't be sniffed at. You know... For 1080p gaming, this thing absolutely crushed most games. And that is exactly what I was aiming for in the first place. So moving on to Cinebench R15, it did score 446. Which to be fair, it is pretty good. You know, it's above bottom. So <laughs> I'm more than happy with that. It did score pretty well. Even though to me, it did seem like an age. It did seem like, you know, it took forever to do this test. 
but it still scored pretty good. And looking at various results over the internet of people doing builds with the 1300X, it does seem to be in the highest possible um, score. So more than happy. Very, very happy with that. So, after watching various different videos, I wanted to see how much I could actually get out of the system in total. So, I decided to try out a bit of overclocking, and I wanted to max this out to the most I could, and I pushed it to 4 gigahertz. Okay, so basically, as you can see here, the results did turn out quite strange okay the gaming was a 55 percent this desktop was 59 and the workstation went to 42 percent which to be fair i felt thought was quite strange being at uh, four gigahertz you know i thought that uh, everything would proper ramp up but i was wrong moving on to page two the c the actual processor itself kind of dropped as well um, it went down to 80.9% which was rather rather strange the graphics card hit 56.3% the hard drive obviously absolutely killed it again and uh, you know looking at the memory kit absolutely fantastic as well so I decided to sort of play around with everything and I managed to get it to 3.9 on a very very stable overclock because of four gigahertz yes it ran i did get strange results from user benchmark etc which was very very strange um as you can see over on cinebench it absolutely killed it and hit five two three but the system itself was pretty stable overall okay i could game on it i could use it for watching videos etc etc and it was actually really really nice um but however it kept on getting various different uh, error messages for the memory etc and it kept on restarting itself which became quite a bit of a pain in the backside when i was turning the computer on after updates etc it wouldn't always boot up so i within um, watching a couple of videos, I decided to downclock it to 3.9, and hey presto, it was super, super stable. Um, not, <laughs> didn't have a single problem after that at all. But something strange, as you can see here, the temperature stayed at 28 degrees centigrade. So jumping from 3.5 to 3.8 and the temperature staying roughly the same it's just it was absolutely crazy i would have thought that you know get, gaining all of that power would have made the processor heat up even more but for some reason it didn't just goes to show how good the actual water cooling system within this system actually did and it performed absolutely amazingly absolutely slamming into the ram memory as well i tuned that up to 2666 and it performed absolutely amazing you know i really am impressed with this machine ryzen 3 has actually blown my mind and this system started to perform and i really do think i absolutely hit the sweet spot with this uh, with this overclock moving on to use a benchmark at the 3.9 overclock you know the results completely changed again gaming hit 56 percent the desktop jumped to 61 percent and the workstation hit 44 percent so i'm absolutely over the moon with them results you know it seems to properly balance the system out as a as a whole you know as you can see here the cpu is clocked at 3.9 it hit 84.3 percent excellent the graphics card hit the same sort of amount and so did the hard drive so once again the memory hit a really really good result yes it did lower down to 99.3 percent but it still performed absolutely immensely and i'm very very happy with that so with that said i did have to give it a, a good old thrashing in this uh, time spy and it came out with 3288 
So, for the graphics score itself, it scored 3,307 and a CPU score of 3,038, which I am very, very happy with. As I'm sure you would agree, guys, that is a very, very good result. And then, of course, moving on to the Cinebench R15, it scored a beautiful 571 points, putting it in third from bottom. That is a fantastic result. Happy days. So let's get on with the actual gaming side of things. CSGO non-overclocked saw some fantastic results in all fairness. Um, as you can see on the screen, it did score pretty well. Um, it wouldn't give me the actual average in total um, until towards the actual end of the video. But looking at it, it did seem to hover around the the 140 to 160 mark. Which, to be fair, I think that is absolutely fantastic. So obviously that is the non-overclocked. But when I did boost it up to the 3.9, things did change quite drastically and did seem to hover well over the 160 to 180 frames per second, which some it was absolutely brilliant. A lot of the time, as you can see, it did hit well over 200, which, to be fair, I didn't really see much of a difference. The gameplay was super, super smooth regardless, and all the settings were literally maxed out, and it was very, very enjoyable. Put it this way, it was fantastic. I really, I, I had fun. Then moving on to Paladins, I did see an average here of um, a 70 frames per second, which is absolutely brilliant. All the settings were completely maxed out again, but things once again changed as soon as I boosted it up to the 3.9 overclock. As you can see on the actual video now, it did absolutely boost up to well over a hundred a lot of the time it did seem to hover around the, the between a hundred and a hundred and thirty so it was quite hard to pick up an average out of all of that because um it done so well and to be honest it was well over a hundred i was more than happy so obviously had to test out PUBG. On average, this game went up to 41 frames per second on a standard out of the box, which to be fair, I don't think was really that good. And to obtain that, I had to turn all the setting down to medium. And it was enjoyable, even though I was getting a lot of lag off the, the actual server itself. I don't know whether it's through the server or through my crappy internet. Either way, I was getting a lot of lag. And it was it was okay. It, you know, it's not the best experience I had by far, but I could play it. But then once I actually overclocked it to 3.9, I was seeing over 60 frames per second. And everything had actually been moved up to high. So I was getting a better experience. And guess what? The lag seemed to stop. So another strange factor in all of this experience i don't know exactly what it was that was causing the lag but now it went over 60 frames per second beautiful and smooth on high happy days so moving on to doom as you can see from the non-overclocked here playing now that it tend to hover around the 30 to 40 frames per second mark it I didn't see any um, game stutter or any lag or anything. It was it was fairly smooth, but overall it was a very very enjoyable experience. And this tend to it's now one of my favourite games because of this overall experience that I had with this particular PC build. So I obviously had to crank up the volume a little bit and push it to the three point nine on the overclock and retest it and wow what a difference this thing tend to hover around the 60 frames per second mark it did obviously dip between you know around like the 50 sometimes up to 60 depends where how heavy the actual intensity of the gameplay was but it was it did seem to actually play a lot smoother again no lag 
insanely enjoyable experience once again. So, if guys, I do recommend this Doom. If you do love first-person shoot-em-ups and you want insane graphics, definitely go out and buy Doom. It is absolutely flipping incredible. Well, guys, that pretty much sums it up, to be fair. Um, as you can see, straight out the box, this PC performs really, really well as a workstation. I did use OBS throughout the whole video to record the video footage of the gameplay. So you can, you're actually getting really, really good results, even though I'm playing and recording at the same time your results may vary but this was what i got and i'm personally very very happy with it the results when i moved it up cranked it cranked the juice up to 3.9 massively improved and it did become more of an enjoyable experience yeah i did see something quite strange with the cooling but anyway guys that pretty much wraps it up i hope you did enjoy the video i would like to apologize for not uploading for a while i have been loaded with like man flu and possibly a chest infection i've been coughing up loads and loads of crap and my vo i lost my voice almost and every time i swallowed it just sw felt like a hedgehog was in my throat and today i woke up and i'm feeling all right my voice is here so i thought why not get this video done for you guys so i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up Give it a thumbs down if you didn't and why not subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and i hope i see you all in the next video so until then be safe take care bye for now